Escorted by Sir Meron, Circe walks to the Great Sept of Baylor for Tywin's funeral, surrounded by numerous lords and ladies, including Marjorie, who she glances at suspiciously. Circe is stopped by the High Septon, who suggests to her that they start soon, since lords and ladies have come from all over Westeros, but she says they will wait a little longer while she has a moment alone with Jaime and their father's corpse. Inside, Jaime warns that all the power and prestige their father built for House Lannister belongs to them now, and that once everyone sees that Tywin is truly dead, their enemies will do everything they can to take it away from them. Cersei bluntly states that their true enemy is Tyrion and that Jaime is partly responsible for Tywin's death since he was the one who released their father's murderer, and then she leaves him. Later, during Tywin's wake, Cersei is approached by Loras, who babbles on and on, but she ignores him, as she is intently watching Tommen and Marjorie sharing a few words and holding hands. Pycelle offers his condolences, yet she completely ignores him as well. She is then approached by Lancel, who has recovered from his wounds at the Blackwater and become extremely pious and joined the Sparrows. Kevin apologizes for the appearance of his son, but Cersei comforts him by saying Lancel will grow out of this phase. While she is having a private moment, Lancel approaches her again and asks for her forgiveness for the unnatural relationship and for serving Robert the wine that led to his death. Cersei brushes off Lancel's request and his prayers for Tywin's soul. Cersei summons Jaime to show him a box she's received. Inside, a stuffed red viper holds Marcella's necklace in its jaws. Cersei is both unnerved and unsurprised by the threat as Dawn blames the Lannisters for the deaths of Oberyn and Aelia Martell. Acknowledging Cersei's distress, Jaime makes a promise, I'm going to Dawn. And I'm bringing our daughter home. When Jaime asks Bronn to join him in this quest, he reveals that Cersei has arranged for Willis Bracken to wed Lolly Stokeworth instead of Bronn, breaking their agreement. Later, two men bring Cersei the head of a dwarf. She's disappointed it's not her brother, but donates the head to Kyburn's lab. Cersei presides over the small council and doles out new titles on Tommen's behalf. Kyburn is named Master of Whisperers, and Mace Tyrell takes on the additional title of Master of Coin. When Cersei appoints her uncle Kevin as Master of War, he rejects the offer. I did not return to the capital to serve as your puppet, he says, emphasizing that Tommen should attend the meetings himself. Kevin reminds Cersei she's nothing more than Queen Mother, and he decides to return to Casterly Rock. Cersei is left dissatisfied with Kevin's departure. On the way to the Sept of Baelor, Cersei is incensed to find the crowd cheering Marjorie's name. She remains stone-faced throughout the ceremony. The following morning, Cersei walks with Tommen along the battlements and tries to subtly turn him against his wife, but Tommen scares her by asking her if she'd prefer to go back to Casterly Rock. Cersei goes to confront Marjorie, finding her bragging about Tommen's libido to her handmaidens. Cersei tries to verbally spar with Marjorie as she used to, but the younger queen is in her prime, and assaults Cersei with backhanded compliments and subtle barbs. Realizing that she is losing, Cersei departs. Later on, Cersei and the small council are visited by the High Septon, who has recently been abducted from Littlefinger's brothel and forced to walk naked through the streets of King's Landing. Cersei is mildly amused and not particularly sympathetic to the man's plight. She later pays a visit to the so-called High Sparrow. Assuming a much more conciliatory and humble tone than she ever has before, Cersei talks with him about the relationship between the Faith and the Crown, and also mentions that she's had the High Septon thrown in the Black Cells. Cersei meets with the High Sparrow again and names him as the new High Septon, allowing him to reinstate the Faith Militant, a military order dedicated to defending the Faith of the Seven which was abolished two centuries ago. Loras Tyrell is arrested during the ensuing rampage for his homosexuality, which Marjorie believes is part of Cersei's plan to divide her and Tommen. Tommen confronts his mother and demands that Loras be released, but she calmly tells him that she didn't order his arrest although her tone of voice seems to imply that she knew beforehand that Loras would be arrested and allowed it to happen in order to interfere with Marjorie and Tommen's relationship. During her meetings with Littlefinger, Cersei again feigns ignorance about Loras' arrest and seems unconcerned about what repercussions this might have. The Queen Regent is about to dismiss Baelish when he admits that even though he lost track of Arya, he has discovered Sansa Stark's whereabouts. She's finally back at Winterfell, allying herself with House Bolton. Cersei is naturally livid that the Boltons have betrayed her and vows that they'll end up being flayed for their crimes. 
Peter then suggests that Cersei could just wait a while until Stannis has dealt with the Boltons or vice versa. The Vale army, under his command, could later easily mop up the remains. The only boon Littlefinger wants for his service is to be named Warden of the North. Cersei readily agrees on the condition that Baelish brings her Sansa's head. After a brief but tense meeting with Olena in which mutual insults are exchanged, Cersei takes part in the trial of Loras Tyrell. Though she appears incredulous towards the accusations, it is clear that she has played a part in engineering the entire process. She plays the same trump card that she once did with Tyrion and Shay by making a deal with Olivar, Loras's lover, to testify against Loras in exchange for being spared from persecution. As a result of her schemes, Loras is to be put on trial, and Marjorie is imprisoned for giving false testimony. When Tommen loses his appetite over his wife's arrest, Cersei attempts to calm him down and gives him a long speech about how as king, he will be faced with many circumstantial situations in which he will be powerless to act, as Robert Baratheon sometimes was, though she proclaims her love for him by claiming that she will do anything it takes to protect him, even if it means burning down entire cities, and weeps as she cuddles her son. She later visits Marjorie in her cell, bringing her food and trying to convince her that she will do her utmost to get her out but Marjorie angrily counters that she knows Cersei engineered both her arrest and Loras's in order to retain control over her son, and shouts at her to get out, throwing the bowl of stew at her and calling her a hateful bitch. Cersei leaves and finds the High Sparrow beneath the Sept of Baelor, who tells her that both Loras and Marjorie will be put on trial, and certain Septons, including himself, will stand as judges. Cersei thanks the High Sparrow for his actions, and he proceeds to give her a speech about the history of the Sept. He tells her that the Tyrrell's falsehoods will be revealed for all the world to see, as in the case of everyone, including Cersei herself. The High Sparrow reveals that Lancel confessed his adulterous affair with Cersei following Jaime's capture by Rob Stark, and orders Cersei arrested, to her horror. She is taken to a cell by a group of scepters, but threatens them that her face is the last thing they will see before they die for what they are doing to her. Cersei remains in custody for the next few days, visited only by Scepter Unella who offers her water in return for a confession, but she repeatedly refuses. She is later visited by Kyburn, who informs her that the charges against her are treason, incest and regicide, which she dismisses as lies, though Kyburn reminds her that the faith will not depend on physical proof as much as the crown does in her upcoming trial. She asks about Jamie, but Kyburn claims there has been no response, and further tells her that Pycelle has summoned Kevin back to the capital and Tommen has fallen into a depression. Kyburn, however, tells Cersei that she can still confess, but she refuses. Before he leaves, Kyburn tells her that his work is progressing. Later, when Unella visits her again, Cersei offers to make her a lady of the capital or have her killed, depending on whether or not she will help her. Unella pours her water on the floor and leaves. Cersei finally abandons her pride and licks the water from the dungeon floor, breaking into tears. Some time later, Cersei is brought before the High Sparrow to confess her sins. She confesses of adultery with Sir Lancel Lannister, but denies her incestuous relationship with her brother Jaime. She begs to be allowed to go to the Red Keep to see her son Tommen. The High Sparrow accepts, but states that she has to stand trial. Cersei is brought to a cell where she is stripped naked and washed, and her long blonde hair is cut short. She is then brought outside where she is forced to walk completely naked through the streets of King's Landing, from the Great Sept of Baelor to the Red Keep as punishment. She is escorted through an angry mob, who hurl filth and vicious insults at her. With bloody feet, Cersei makes it to the Red Keep. Upon entering the gates, Cersei finds her uncle Kevin Lannister, Grand Maester Pycelle and Kyburn waiting for her. Kyburn attempts to comfort her by covering her body with a cloak. Heavy footsteps are heard, and Kyburn introduces Cersei to the newest member of the Kingsguard, a seven-foot-tall man in golden armor, the Mountain, who has his face hidden constantly due to Kyburn's experimentation and the effects of Matacore venom. Kyburn suggests Cersei to go inside to have a look at her feet, which are badly injured, when the huge knight lifts her up and carries her away. 